Now on video four, what we'll do is we'll set up our register form within our Angular application where we can create new users. So we know our API is working. We are able to create a user from Postman, but now we'll want to set up the register form. So we'll be working inside of the service and also our component. We already have the HTML form created. If we go back here and we go to the top, go to the register form, and here's the form. We're not worried about the roles right now or the claims. I have these for our future videos, the role and the claims. Right now, what we want to send in is the username, email, and password. Let's open up our HTML and our TS file. So our register component, that's located inside the modules folder, and that is inside the app modules and inside the auth module. And the register HTML, let's open that up. And we'll just take a look at this. We don't need to make any changes here. And then the TS file. And while we're here, let's go ahead and open up our auth service. This is where we're going to set up our register method. So inside the HTML, there's not much form validation or anything here. All I did with uh, form validation is I made these fields required. So the username, email, password, all these fields are required. And if you don't fill them out, then this button here is disactivated. So I, ke I kept it real basic and simple with the form validation. And these are the three fields that we're interested in right now. So when the user submits the form, we send it off to this method right here. And that is right here inside of the TS file. Now, as you can see, we're not calling any service right now. All I'm doing is I'm giving alert message, but we're not really doing anything. And we're going to replace all of this. So I can just get rid of this part here. We can leave these two up here. We'll still need them. And now we're ready to make our call to the service. And the service that we're going to be calling is the auth service. So let's take a peek at that and we'll jump over here. So inside of our auth service, we're pulling in our URL and we're pulling that in from the environment variable. And that's localhost 5000. If we go back to Postman, and that is this right here, localhost 5000. So that's what we're pulling in from the environments variable. And then, then we need to call the identity register from our register method. If we jump back in in here and we'll set up our register method right here. So we're passing in all the information from our form into our register method. And then we're calling on the HTTP. So that is this right here. And this is from Angular, the HTTP client. And also we have this set up within our module. If we jump back into here and I'll go ahead and open up this module, that's our off module. And we're using this HTTP client module and we're pulling that in. And here is where we're pulling it in from. So if you're using the HTTP client, you want to make sure you pull it into your module. So we're all set up to make HTTP calls now. And so we have this HTTP. We're using the post. We're passing in our base URL. That's localhost 5000. And then the endpoint. And that is identity register. Exactly the way we had it set up in Postman. And then we're passing in the model information, the username, password, and email. That's all we need to do inside the auth service. We just set up our auth service. Now let's set up our register component. And in here, now we're ready to call our service. So we're already bringing in our auth service. And now we'll call that register method we just set up. So we'll call the register method. We'll pass in the model information. And we're getting back an observable, so we'll subscribe to it. And here is where we'll pass in an observable. So I'll create that right up here. And I called it register observer. And if we're successful at creating an account, we're going to turn that progress bar, and that's that progress bar that goes across the top. We're going to turn it green. And then we'll let the user know that they successfully created an account. So we'll give them an alert message. And then we'll complete that progress bar that's going across the top. Now, if you're interested in these two services, the progress bar and the alert service, I already created videos on how to set that up within your Angular application. If you look to the right here, you'll see something pop out on the right. If you click on that, that will send you to a playlist on how to implement these services throughout your application, your Angular application. So just click on that if you would like to use these progress bars and the alert service. Now, if there's any errors, we're going to turn the progress bar red. We'll let the user know with a alert service what error they have. Let's say they have a duplicate username or something like that. And then also we'll complete the progress bar. 
So now all we need to do is we need to pass in this register observer, so I'll copy this, into this subscribe method. And now we are ready to create users. So let's test this out. I'm going to enter in a username that already exists. So Mike test and then one, two, three, four. And then we should get an error for this. And we did, and username Mike is already taken. And then if we enter in a different username, so Mike2, but the same email, so this is already taken, we should get an error for that. And email is already taken. Good. Okay, so now let's try and create a new account. So this account does not exist. So if we try to register this, and we successfully create an account. Now, just to be safe, we'll check the database and make sure that this new account is in our database. So I'll close everything down again, and then we'll open up the database. So I'll close this down, and I have to reopen that. So open database and select the database. And if we go inside of our ASP.NET users and then show table. And now we have a second user inside of our database. Now that we're able to create a new user, let's set up a way for the user to log in. And that's what we'll do in video five. And we'll, we'll be working inside of the identity controller and we'll set up the sign-in or the login API.